Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. Well, this week, families all across this country have been trying to process the idea that 19 children and two teachers were slaughtered, were murdered in Uvalde, Texas. You know, this doesn't happen in other countries around the, around the world. Um, the United States is really unique. And what makes us unique is access to guns. I had calls in my office, and I actually spoke with uh, with one of my uh, one of my constituents who was absolutely distraught. She has a seven year old son. Her name is Anna Cade, and she wants us to do something wants us to do something real to address gun violence. So um, in our conversation, which I actually talked about on the floor of the House of Representatives, one of the things she said is that the one thing that I can't say to my seven-year-old son is that you will be safe in school. And I looked around the hall to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And I said, isn't that what we all want to be able to say to our children? But none of us really can. We were in a debate on the Protect Our Kids Act, um, a package of seven pieces of legislation that the House of Representatives, led by the Democrats, we only at the end had five Republicans to join us, to have common sense laws that would protect our children, protect our families, stop these mass shootings, stop the violence, stop the access to these deadly weapons. So let me just give you a, a quick rundown of the, the bills that, that, uh, that we passed. Um, we're raising the age from, um, from 18 to 21 to buy an assault weapon. Now, believe it or not, there really is data that says that that will reduce the number because often it is uh, young people under than under 21 who do these things. But I also want you to know that um, coming up in the House of Representatives, we're going to be considering a ban on assault weapons like we had under the Clinton administration and to no one's surprise, the number of these kinds of mass shootings decreased. Getting these military-style weapons out of the hands of anybody who wants them and goes out on a rampage, it works. So um, that's one bill. Um, the, uh, the, the other is that we really want to do a crackdown on gun trafficking and straw purchases. This is really important in Illinois because the majority of um, murders by gun um, happen from, uh, it's because the guns come from states outside of Illinois. We have wonderful, very strong gun laws in the city of Chicago and throughout the state of Illinois. So we have to crack down on these guns that shouldn't be coming across the border and coming and being trafficked in, uh, in, in, in Illinois. So that is very, very important to us. We have a, a, a number of other bills, including the Safe Gun Storage Act, requiring that the guns that are in households are uh, responsibly kept away from children and others and locked up um, we also um, passed, um, we uh, outlining, outlawing high capacity magazines that are design, designed for no other purpose than for being able to shoot many people all at once. Background checks for uh, anyone who would purchase a ghost gun. What's a ghost gun? It means it doesn't have any ID, identification, any stamp on it. Um, so if you want to purchase that kind of a kit, then you would have to have a background, uh, background check. And you should know that the House of Representatives has already passed, over a year ago, 
a, a comprehensive universal background check requirement. So far, the Senate has not acted on, on that. Um, so we had, we, we passed this package of legislation. Um, we are going to continue to push and push to get all, hopefully, of them passed. But one other bill that we also um, did as a separate vote um, is called the Ext um, extreme Risk um, uh, Protection Order Act. What this does is would allow family members to be able to report to the police authorities that someone in a house, in that household or someone close to them um, will do either harm to himself or others is likely to do that. So the police have to make a determination on uh, whether or not to send that to a federal district court. So it's not just willy-nilly, you know, I think someone's really dangerous, take their guns away, um, or, you know, don't let them buy a gun. Um, it has to be adjudicated to say that, yes, we're going to not allow a dangerous person, either because he's going to commit suicide or because he or she is, uh, you know, going to, he's going to go on a rampage. Um, so that, um, some people call it the red flag law, to red flag someone who is a potential danger. So that bill passed as, as well, and now we're going to, you know, proceed ahead. But, you know, the gun violence is now, in the United States of America, the number one killer of children, more than car accidents and more than cancer, any disease. Um, it's time for us to get a handle on this problem, and we are determined to do just that. Um, in addition, an important piece of, of uh, legislation that I have uh, worked on for now a couple of years um, is coming to a hearing called the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. You know, I know many people feel very frustrated on the Internet, feel that they can't control their personal information, um, that they are, uh, you know, being abused by the platforms uh, and that they don't have any control. Um, and so we have now a bipartisan uh, piece of legislation that we're going to be having a, uh, a hearing on. And we uh, are happy that we've been able to work, for example, on my consumer protection subcommittee, my Republican um, ranking member, Gus Spilarakis from Florida. Um, we are working on this bill um, together. Um, and the, the bill um, would say things like, companies cannot collect any more data than they absolutely need for that particular transaction. You know, sometimes you think, you know, well, why would they want my cell phone? Or why do they need my date of birth or whatever? No, only the uh, information that is relevant to that service or transaction can be, uh, can be collected. It would ban the um, take it or leave it kind of terms like, well, yes, but if you want to proceed forward to get what you want um, mailed to you, then uh, you have to say you agree to all the cookies and all the things you know that you have to approve. Um, and so, no, there's no take it or, or leave it. Um, consumers will have the right to access, to delete, and to move their data. I'm talking about um, portability. So if you want to leave that particular um, platform or company, you will have the right and the ability to, to do that. And if you want to delete everything, you will have, they'll be required to give you that opportunity to, to, to do that. Um, we protect children on the internet in this legislation. I know that many parents worry about that, and we're going to have additional uh, protections. 
we require that all the uh, companies, that the, the platforms um, abide by the community standards that they announce. You know, companies like uh, Facebook will say, oh, this is, you know, what we, what we do to protect consumers. If they say that, and they have to list things that they will do, then they have to live by that or they will face accountability, liability. I'm really looking forward to finally completing our multi-year uh, effort to get a privacy bill for Americans to be able to join the European Union and some states that have been doing it around the country and say that consumers will find that their privacy is protected online. And now let me uh, turn to the January 6th committee hearings. Uh, about 20 million people watched that, that hearing. I was riveted myself um, on Thursday evening. I thought that it was very powerful and very disturbing at the same time. Um, we, uh, we saw how the Capitol Police, how so many people, and how the Capitol of the United States was under attack. The uh, young woman who was the, um, from the Capitol Police said it was like a war zone. She was never trained for that kind of activity as a police officer. She was pretty severely injured during that and her testimony was very, very powerful. I think it's very important that the American people see the details of exactly what happened in this attempted coup on uh, the United States of, of America. And um, it will be very thorough. The committee has interviewed over 1,000 different individuals and a lot of new information that we haven't heard before, I think we will, we will see. I also met this week with, a, um, with about 30 people from the Assyrian community within the 9th Congressional District. You know, we are one of the most diverse districts in the whole country, and we have a growing population of Assyrians, many of whom come from Iraq. In fact, um, during one of the votes that took place in Iraq, there was actually a polling station in, um, in the district where people who are from originally from Iraq could go and, uh, and vote there. Um, so I met with about 30 people led by this amazing young woman, uh, Atur Sargon, who is the first Assyrian woman to ever be elected to anything in Illinois. And she now serves as a trustee in the village of Lincolnwood. And also Mary Oshana, who's a Skokie Park District commissioner, who is also a Syrian, um, were among the leaders there. And they asked me if I would join, join the newly founded Assyrian caucus in the House of Representatives. And I was happy, happy to do just that. Well, it is Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. But you know, it is 53 years since the what they call the Stonewall Riots, when police raided a gay bar and, and beat and harassed um, and, and just went after violently against the um, gay community that was uh, at, at the bar. But this time... 53 years ago, they fought back. And it really triggered the whole fight for equality in our country for the LGBTQ community. And, uh, and I am so proud that I, uh, uh, and, and grateful, really, grateful to these uh, people who set the pace way back then. And am proud that in, in 2015, because of my activism as well, um, was able to be um, inaugurated in the Chicago uh, LGBT Hall of Fame. Proud of that. Um, and uh, the Pride Parade is coming up on June 26th. 
this year, and uh, I'll be in it, as usual. And it is, I think, just one of the most colorful and fun parades that we have in Chicago. So, you know, it's a, a really good time for everyone, for the family to come out and in, enjoy the, uh, the Pride Parade and stand up for equality for, for, for everyone. And finally, as usual, I'll just end with a little bit of a COVID uh, update. Um, we know that in the state of Illinois, there were 4,294 new cases and 10 more deaths. Um, so we're not totally done with it yet. Continue to be careful. Some states are still seeing an increase in the, uh, in the number of cases. And the Biden administration um, uh, ha, uh, uh, announced that it will, is gearing up to roll out vaccines for children five and under. Um, and the first vaccines um, could start as early as the week of June 20th. Um, and then the program being ramped up to make sure that there's sufficient vaccine for all the children that you want to have vaccinated that are younger than that. So have a, uh, have a, a, a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.